Hi guys. Um, so today my Zoom meeting, my Zoom class failed to record and convert on my computer for some really sad reason. But we talked about a lot of really cool and interesting and important things regarding South Africa. Um, and I wanted to make sure that everyone had access to that information, even if you weren't a part of our Zoom. So I'm actually going to make this little video uh, to give you some of my personal knowledge and experience in South Africa, because I was able to travel and I spent three weeks there about three years ago. Um, so I'm gonna show you some things that I got while I was there, show you some pictures and share with you my thoughts and takeaways from South Africa. So the first thing I would like to show you is some money. Um, so this is the South African Rand. Um, I have a one Rand coin um, that has a springbok on it, um, which is a very popular symbol in South Africa. A springbok is like an antelope, um, but a little bit bigger and meatier. Uh, it's also the mascot for their rugby team, which is really popular. Um, and then this is a 10 Rand note. On this side, there is a rhino. And on the other side, there's a very, very important historical figure named Nelson Mandela. Uh, Nelson Mandela is a very special individual to South Africa and the rest of the world as well. Um, up until 1991, South Africa was under something called apartheid, which was really intense racial segregation between the European colonizers, typically from England um, and Dutch as well. So the Netherlands, between the colored individuals, and that's what they refer to themselves as, which would be any mixed individual, as well as anyone who is West Indian um, or from the Islamic world or North Africa that came to South America. Um, and then there's people who are African, tribal African, who would have been a part of the Gosa or Zulu tribes, as well as many of the other tribes that resided in the ge geographic area that is now South Africa. Um, there was really rigid divisions between the three groups, but in 1991, due to a lot of civil rights activism, apartheid ended, which is really great. And then Nelson Mandela, this guy, became their first president, the first African president, um, in 1994 and his legacy lives on in South Africa. He's also really special because he was arrested for his activism and he actually won his presidency while being in prison. And when you land in the Cape Town airport, there is um, a recreation of the jail cell, cell that he lived in for many, many years. Um, there's also a really, really incredible letter that he wrote from that. Um, and it's just a great historical site. So that's some historical background on South Africa, South Africa as well. Also here I have this um, uh, reinterpretation of a tribal mask. Um, this is a modern rendition. It is not an actual historic artifact. Um, and I got it at a kind of art gallery type museum in Cape Town at the V&A Waterfront Shopping Mall. Uh, so that is really cool. I have this with all of my other kind of travel goodies that I have in my room. I also have two key two keychains. Um, this one is made of beads and was made by locals. My friend got this for me when she went to South Africa um, for a mission trip. And then I also have this guy that I got when I was there. It's Africa. Um, and on the back, there's a lion, which is kind of the national symbol of South Africa, um, unofficially. Um, in South Africa, they speak four dominant languages, Gosa, Zulu, Afrikaans. Afrikaans is like a, a, a Dutch, kind of sounds like Dutch, it's a Dutch derivative, and English. Again, they were colonized by the Dutch, which is why they speak Afrikaans, and they were also colonized by the British, which is why a lot of them speak English as well. Uh, Zulu and Gosa are two tribal languages that are heavily spoken by the dominant ethnic groups in South Africa, which is really cool. In Cape Town, where I was at for my journey, um, Gosa was the predominant one, but Zulu was definitely spoken as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, I also talked about the students, or talked to the students in my class about um, ethnic 
or sorry, not ethnic, economic disparity. So I would like to show you some pictures of what I'm talking about. So ethnic, or oh my gosh, economic disparity um, is the difference between money and resources of certain people. If there's a large economic disparity, it means the rich people live very, very different lives and have access to more resources than those who are less fortunate. Um, and I, this phenomenon exists everywhere in the world, even here in the United States, but I was personally confronted with it most um, obviously in South Africa. It became more apparent to me anyway, but again, it exists all over the world. And I would like to show you some pictures um, from my travels there. Uh, so this is a picture that I took while I was there um, with beautiful table mountain in the background. Um, and these are some of the housing. This is probably the average housing, I would say. Um, this is what I encountered the most when I was living with and kind of experiencing life with the families that I was working with. Um, and these houses might look rudimentary on the outside, but they're actually quite nice on the inside. And they're usually pretty generational. So this property would have been in a family for many, for one or more generations or several. Uh, down here, I have a lot of fun pictures. Uh, this was one of the first sites I saw after leaving the airport. Um, this is one of the townships um, that's very close to the international airport in Cape Town. Um, and this is how many people live in South Africa in very small rudimentary um, housing like this uh, with exposed wires, um, improvised protection. Um, some people would break glass bottles and glue the shards onto the tops of fences and, and um, areas around their house to kind of keep keep people off, off of their property. In areas like this, there'd be a lot of barbed wire on top of houses um, and the use of material like plywood and corrugated steel to kind of construct this type of housing. And this type of housing um, was kind of an, an echo back to apartheid. So this is how a lot of the disparaged and um, uh, oppressed people of South Africa, particularly the tribal blacks and the colors as they refer to themselves again, um, lived. As we go up, um, here's another picture that I showed the students earlier of kind of what that living situation looked like. Um, so again, not the greatest situation. Um, also, a lot of these places don't have running water. Um, there would be a community tap somewhere in the vicinity and you would go to that tap to get your water and take it back to your homes. Um, but South Africa is also beautiful and there's a lot of very wealthy places as well. Um, when I was in South Africa, I was a volunteer performer um, and I every Every weekend that I was there, I put on a series of performances at a really beautiful mall called the V&A Waterfront. Um, and while I was there, I was exposed to luxury brands, very wealthy people coming in and out. It's where cruise boats dock sometimes as well. So lots of tourism um, and a lot of wealthy people coming to South Africa to view the beautiful coastlines, the vineyards, the mountains, the wildlife, there's a lot of tourism there, but it's also sad to see that just up the street, there's people living in disparity. Um, but again, I wanna highlight that this is not just a feature of South Africa, but lots of people all over the world live in these conditions, even here in the United States. Um, perhaps not to that extreme, um, but that disparity does exist. Um, but I would also like to say that I adored my time in South Africa. Everyone that I encountered was very friendly and welcoming. Um, and I got to work with a lot of school children um, and be able to sing and dance and perform and teach them singing, dancing, and performing. 
and I've never met a more talented group of individuals in my entire life um, and a more joyous group of people as well. Um, essentially, the takeaway from this is get out and see the world. Um, go experience other places. It opens your mind to the possibility and it exposes you to lots of different people and culture and food and all of these wonderful things that make us better people as individuals. Um, so yeah, go explore. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for tuning in.